Wargaming, and today is my first attempt at producing a YouTube video. Um, I've decided to play Campaign Gettysburg by John Tiller. Um, if you know anything about Wargaming, John Tiller's been making war games for a long time, since the mid-90s. Um, Award-winning uh, war game designer, um, and very popular in that community of war gamers. Um, let's get started. I'm going to play a, a I'm going to play a me versus me game, um, and I'm going to do the campaign scenario. So let's start a new campaign. I'm going to switch. I'm going to take turns as the Union, and then send the file back over to the Confederate side and play as the Confederate side. So kind of a solo hot seat game. The Campaign Overview After the defeat of the Army of Potomac at Chancellorsville, the armies face each other across the Rappahannock. Each side ponders its next move as the summer campaign season approaches. The Current Situation June 10th, the opening moves. Each side must evaluate and perhaps change its plans based on the intelligence gleaned from the action at Brandy Station. And from what I know about Brandy Station, it was a large cavalry engagement between the Confederates and Union, and it was considered a Union victory mostly because um, it kept Robert E. Lee in the dark as far as the Union um, intentions for the most part. So how the campaign works is each side gets to make a strategic decision and I've predetermined um, what the decisions would be um, the Union this is be the Union's um, decision to make right now and there's four choices um, the choice that I made had made earlier was defense in depth of the Rappahannock reserve and the reserve held back the historical was defense in depth of the Rappahannock Reserve mid-distance, um, which I believe General Hooker was still in command at this time before me took was handed over the army, um, and a lot of those plans were already in place. Um, regardless, well, we're going to get more into maybe some of the campaign history, but let's get back to the game. The action at Brandy Station has helped you flesh out the enemy's situation and plans. The Rebel Second Corps, and perhaps more infantry, is in the area around Culpeper, and it appears that an offensive is scheduled to begin soon. The Army will begin to shift upstream immediately in order to cover the route to Washington. The defense will be organized in depth with light forces screening the crossings of the Rappahannock while the mass of the army is held in the rear to be committed when the focus of the enemy attack becomes clear. This reserve will be located far from the river at Warrenton Junction. While the response time to an attack will be delayed, the army will be able to counter any threat, especially crossing far upstream. The Cavalry Corps will cover the flanks of the position. So this will be the Confederate decision, and I had predetermined. I used a random number generator to make these decisions. By the way, um, the we'll go with the historical decision that the Confederates made. Second Corps enters the valley on June 16th. First Corps screens the right flank on June 15th. The fight at Brandy Station supplied no new information regarding the dispositions and plans of the Federal forces. The offensive will proceed as planned. Second Corps will move into the valley at once. First Corps will follow, taking a course west of Bull Run Mountain Chain, with Third Corps shifting from Fredericksburg to follow the path taken by the Second Corps around the 15th. First Corps' path will provide infantry backup 
for the Calvary screen if necessary. So based on the decisions that both commanders make, um, the game will create a scenario. And I think there's a probability of what um, that scenario will be. There's In the game, there's predetermined or preset scenarios that you can play standalone. Um, when you play the campaign game, there, um, depending on your choices, you are given a scenario to, to, to battle out between each other. So this is back to the Union side. The defensive position along the Rappahannock is of little avail against the Confederate forces which appear in the valley. So the Confederates have the strategic initiative. So they actually, uh, the Union side does not make any moves at this point. The first move goes to the Confederates. So the file is actually being created to go back to the Confederate side. And this is the Confederate message. Second Corps moves up the valley. The campaign begins in earnest when this force encounters elements of the Union Eighth Corps. All right, so the scenario is decided. You don't know exactly which scenario um, is picked, but um, there's a total of 86 turns in this one, and we can zoom out and look at the dispositions. So it looks like we are in the valley. The city of Winchester is one of the objectives. Um... Again, this is the Confederate move. So these Union flags are objective hexes for the Confederates to take. And it doesn't look like any Confederate units are on the field to begin with. Um, we can look at units that are scheduled to arrive. We have Johnson's division arriving. Um, units arrived. All right, 16th Virginia Cavalry. Oh, it looks like Stewart's on the field. Not not Jeb. All right, so it looks like. Early's division. So it. These are the unit boxes up here. Um, and they have arrived on the south side of the, the map on the Valley Turnpike um, at Newton or Newtown. And for those that are unfamiliar with the game, um, the unit information it shows you the strength in, in the number of men uh, the quality of the units which uh, affects you know morale whether or not they're going to route how well they're gonna fight and fire um, the range of their weapon so the range is five uh, the move movement points so movement points are assigned and depending on if they're using a road or not uh, rough terrain um, reduces that movement amount um, you have your commander. Um, in these games, command and control are are very important um, to how well your units fight. So it's very so these unit commanders are um, very important that they're sticking with their correct units. So looking at the basic requirements of this scenario with these objective hexes it looks like the design of the scenario is to to occupy the road the turnpike um, occupy Winchester um, a 
eliminate any or remove any Union forces that might be in the way. Um, I believe to the north of here we have what's called exit hexes and I think these exit hexes are for the Union side so if the Union is able to retreat off the map they'll score points. Um, I might have to dig a little deeper into the rules about that. Um, it looks like also a Confederate exit hex here would mean if the Confederates units enter this hex and remove off the map um, they also score points that way too. And object thousand points for the objectives there. It's um, there's a scoring system in the game. All right, under victory here. So the it, the first side is the rebel. That's you, the first side is usually the the side that has the initiative in in any battle or campaign. So they the objective points are tallied up here. Um, you get points for casualties. Um, so the rebel casualties um, will deduct from the total points, and these are the thresholds for victory. So. 0 to 2,000 points is a major defeat for the Rebels. Um, and then 2,000 to 6,000 would be a minor defeat. Or, um, I'm sorry, that would be a draw. 2,000 to 0 would be a minor defeat. Anything below 0 points would be a major defeat for the Rebels. 0 or below. And then 6,000 to 8,000 would be a minor victory. Anything over 8,000 points will be a major victory. Um, basically, looks like the rebels need to secure the valley, get these um, hex, these victory hexes, especially these 1,000 point ones right here. Um, and also try to stop as many Union units that might be on this map from retreating. And for now, I believe that will conclude the introduction to the video. Um, on the next one, I will go into a little bit more planning, and then we'll take a look at how the union is set up, and we'll start playing the game.